What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren, here as always with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, B? My brother, so good to see you. I miss recording shows, man. It's been it's been a little while that we have done one. It is the end of the year. So I'm super excited that we got one squeezed in before the end of the year. So this will post hopefully before the new year. So I'm I'm excited. You know, it's been it's been an interesting, interesting year. But getting super excited for the new year and just everything that is that is going on. I have family in town and just, you know, my little sister came into town yesterday. So it's always it's always good. You know, I mean, like when you actually get to Oh, spend time with your people you know it's it's something that you don't at least i don't get to see her very often so it's just a, a good time you know how are you guys your office looks amazing it's getting there it's a little messy right now i've got a bunch of boxes and things that i need to wrap and mm-hmm. uh, we're, still, we're still getting settled in over here i'm moving my my main like corporate office too so a lot of that stuff but yeah i'm excited for the holidays man looking forward to to just taking a beat and taking a breather Taking a few days off next week, go to New Hampshire, unplug, and then just get ready for Nashville. So yeah, Nashville is around fun. the corner, guys. So we're we're excited, excited to see. Yeah. You. Like before we know it, we're gonna blink and it's gonna be Nashville. Yeah, next week. So whenever this show comes out, make sure that you spend some time, you know, like really like reflecting on on what has been, and really allowing yourself. We were talking about this on our on our coaching call with the boardroom today. Really allow yourself to paint perfection, right, for the next year. And and really like get yourself just up, get your favorite cup of coffee, get a workout in, really like feel good, feel healthy, and then go sit down in a place that like inspires you where you feel like big and infinite. And just let yourself let yourself dream, right? Like it's it's the beginning of the new year and it's literally gonna be whatever you want it to be, right? And so it's that moment for you to like, yeah, the lessons that came from the, the, the past year, it's it's all it's all good. It's all water under the bridge, you know, like don't don't get hung up on it. Could you have done things better? Could you follow up better? Could you have had better systems? Sure. But don't bring any of that. Like don't bring any of that shit that doesn't serve you into the new year. And then just allow yourself to really like next year. I like to frame it a little different. I started doing this in my journal where I ask a, a question, two questions at the end of the day. What did I do great today? And then what do I get to improve tomorrow? Mm. Right. And when you, when you frame it that way, yeah. And I got that from you, right? Like up Mm -hmm. until now, what do I get to, right? I get Mm -hmm. to do these things. So when you frame it that way, it's, it's opportunity instead of beating yourself up. Cause I'm, you know, as a perfectionist, I can beat myself up constantly. Right. And it's not, it doesn't help anything. Right. You want to keep it in a positive frame of like, I get to get better tomorrow. And Mm -hmm. here's some things that I get to get better at. So Mm -hmm. just frame it that way. Don't beat yourself up. Look over the last 12 months, um, see where you're at. You know, did you hit your goals? If not, just be honest, like Mm -hmm. why? And let's, let's recalibrate, but don't be one of those people that like that's goals and doesn't really think about it. And then two weeks into the year, like they've already fallen off the wagon, like spend some time over the next couple of weeks. Like, what do I really want for next year? What would make this the best year yet? And on the flip side. Am I willing to do the work to make it happen? And if I am, then I'm going to commit to myself to doing this, to doing whatever activity I need to do, to figuring it out, to hit this goal. Mm -hmm. Most people, they don't make real decisions and go all in and fully commit. There's a big difference between I am going to versus I hope to. There's a big, big, big difference there. So be intentional with what you want to commit to. Yeah. Yeah. And keep all of it on the scale. And what I mean by that is when you set the goal, understand and commit to not not just a fluffy part of it, not just the part that feels good, but also already commit to the work and the hustle that goes in it. I'm going to run a marathon, commit to the hours and hours and hours of training, commit to the hours and hours and hours of diet, commit to all of those things, because then you have a true commitment to what you're doing 
where everything is on the table and everything is on the scale. Because if you don't commit to everything that's on the thing, you just think about this stuff that feels good. When life comes and it's not all going to feel good because that's just how fucking shit goes. Like it just, it can't all feel good. Like it's just not, not possible. Then you're ready. And you know, this is like, oh, okay, this is this moment. This is the moment that I knew was going to come. This is the moment that I get sick. This is the moment thing. And you, and you know it, right? And I feel like our show today is actually the perfect show to get into the new year with because it's very real estate agent kind of focus. And again, I've said this multiple times throughout the show. And I'm so glad we record the intros now before the show, like after the show. Don't let it impact you that it's not like that you're a co-host or you're a SDR investor. Just it's switch irrelevant, it every says, yeah, it's every time he says real estate, performer. yeah, every time he says real estate agent, you say co-host or you say SDR investor or you say hotelier or whatever it is that you label yourself as you are. Just take the information because he delivered. I have like three pages worth of notes and anybody that has done what he's any field for as long as he has, you need to sit down and listen to. 100%. So without further ado, this is his second time around on this STR Secrets podcast. We have Steve Schull. Enjoy the show. All right, STR Nation. Today we have a very special guest, a second time guest on the podcast. We had him on almost about a year ago, almost to the day, actually. I was looking up the episode. We have Mr. Steve Schull on, who is a beast and a legend in the real estate space, quite frankly, if I say so. And uh, really excited to talk about a couple of his new books that just came out. But before we get into that, Steve, for the folks that haven't uh, listened to the first episode, you want to give us the, the two minute rundown and your pretty impressive real estate journey over the last couple decades? Sure. I um, grew up uh, outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in Bucks County, went to the College of William and Mary, was fortunate enough to make it with the Miami Dolphins as a free agent, played four years in the NFL, played in Super Bowl 17 against the Washington Redskins. I was tri-captain uh, for the Dolphins for that game. Knee injury ended my career, went back, got an MBA, went to, uh, started working on Wall Street at Solomon Brothers, then uh, made a dramatic shift uh, moved out to the West Coast in 1991, started selling residential real estate. And in my first year in business with a partner, closed 53 transactions uh, in a terrible, terrible market. And then uh, in the second year, we were on track to close 100 deals. And I went to uh, a trainer, sales trainer, uh, we were going to real estate seminars and came to him with the idea of starting a coaching program in real estate. Up to that point in time, coaching did not exist. And so in 1993, we launched that program. In 1996, I opened my own company, Performance Coaching. Still have that company. Took a slight detour in 2007 opened up a real estate brokerage, Telus Properties, uh, which eventually sold to Douglas Elliman. And here I am today. And as you mentioned, uh, just released in the last couple months, two new books. One is called Real Estate is Not Rocket Science. And the other one is the Real Estate Team Playbook. Love it, love it. I'd love to dive into Real Estate is Not Rocket Science. I love that title. And, um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to have a lot of really good mentors over the years that have guided me as I got into real estate investing and all these different things. And one of the things that I admired about, not all of them, but a few key ones was how they were able to keep things simple. They're like, kid, it's not rocket science. It's some basic math. If you can do some basic math, you know, and there were obviously some other things, but, you know, I compare that now I'm doing a, uh, certificate program at Cornell. They had a program around hotel investing, which is a lot of my focus. I'm like, yeah, I'll go through that. And I'm like, man, you guys just make this so complicated. You have these, you know, 35 tab spreadsheets for your underwrite. I'm like, it's not rocket science. So I'd love to dive into that book because I think it'll make this whole niche a lot more approachable for more people. I called, you know, I titled it. This is something I've said for years. 
And the title is the title because guess what? Real estate is not rocket science. It's really not. And what got me into residential real estate is when I was first studying to be an agent and started going to real estate workshops, saw an interview with two agents in Long Beach, California, Kim and Daryl Rouse. And they were in their second year of real estate and they were on track to close 100 deals. I was listening to this interview and it just became abundantly clear to me, real estate was a progression. Contacts equal leads, leads equal appointments, appointments equal listings, listings equal sales. And that was the progression. And, you know, I got that instantaneously. And when I jumped into the business, that's exactly the progression I was working. I was going out, uh, started knocking 25 doors a day, worked up to 200 doors a day. The goal was to make 50 contacts a day and called expired listings every single day. And then put up, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, th this is how far back, you know, would write notes, put it on index cards in a little box that had dates in it. You know, we had a Rolodex, you know, there was no email. We had Thomas guide. I mean, you know, very different time in terms of technology. However, pretty soon, uh, I had been generating enough leads, knocking on doors and calling expired, went out and hired a computer programmer to write a contact management system because they didn't exist at the time, cost $10,000, very rudimentary. However, if I look at what, what that system was, it basically does the same thing all these programs do now. They have a lot more bells and whistles, obviously, it's the same concept. So anyway, it just worked that progression. Every day out, knocking doors, calling expireds, making contacts, following up, trying to convert the leads into the appointments, working on a listing presentation and, you know, going on enough appointments, started to get listings and eventually those listings turned to sales. Love it. Love it. Mm. Eve, what is it? What's your dad always say about the plan? Plan the work and work the plan. Yeah. And it's that. And like, guys, if you're listening to this now and you're like, well, I'm in vacation rental management, it's the same thing. Just switch out real estate. Like real estate is a progression. And that's the beauty of this game across all of it. Like, do you want to do this? Do you want to do boutique hotels, multifamily, real estate agents, wholesaling? Just swap that piece of whatever the thing is and is the progression of it. And I think that's why so many people get so discouraged in real estate is because like it is not rocket science, but it does take some, there is a learning curve and there's some time to it. Because like, this is not hard, but then I'm not making it. And it's because you're not in love with the progression aspect of it. You just want to start running a marathon as soon as you start. And you don't, he didn't start doing 200 door knocks a day, even though like you could do 200 a day, but it just, it's not how you start. You start with 10, maybe 15, 20, 30, 50, you know, you got to plan the work and work the plan. Right. The, the book, I want to take a step back. And I think this will apply to everyone. The reason why people get into residential real estate sales, it's an aspirational business, meaning I can have all the dreams and hopes that I want. I can think as big as I want. Anything's possible. And I'm sure that applies to the investing business also. Man, I can think about all these properties that I'm going to get and all this money I'm going to make. And in real estate specifically, what agents are thinking as they enter in, get their license, I want to make a high six-figure or seven-figure income. I want to be my own boss. I want freedom and flexibility. That's the aspiration. And that's what people get into. And then on day one, they realize, hey, you actually have to work. And that's where it breaks down for almost every agent. They, they don't really understand what they're signing up for. Real estate sales is hard work. Simple. Yet hard. I'm sure real estate investing. Simple, yet hard. You got to do your homework. You got to do the work. No matter what field you're in, you've got to do the work. And the important thing is to understand what that 
work is. I try and simplify things for everyone. I, I look at real estate in this way. There's three phases. The first phase in real estate is you're laying down the foundation. And the foundation of your business is your sphere of influence and your past clients. Now, in the beginning, obviously, you don't have clients, so you're starting with a sphere or you're out prospecting, lead generating to build up your sphere. But you, you have to get CRM right. And your CRM is your you know, client relationship management system. And there's lots of different programs out there. And CRM breaks down into three things. Getting the right people in, group tagged, organized in the right way, getting them set up on the right cadence. And then every day you got to make your calls. Every day you have to have the discipline to make your calls. And your CRM will tell you exactly who you need to call. And if you don't get this part of the business right, then nothing else matters. And this is where it really breaks down for real estate agents. They get on this treadmill of chasing after a deal, chasing after a dollar, and you can never get off that treadmill. And 30 years later, you're still on that treadmill, still chasing after another deal. And this is what I'm trying to help agents avoid. The worst thing that can happen getting into residential real estate sales is you work 30 plus years and you get to the end and your last deal is your last paycheck and it's not enough. And that's, that's how it's going to end for almost every single real estate agent if they don't understand how this business operates. And so the first phase is you're laying down the foundation. You're building out your database. I would imagine it would be the same thing for you. You've you got to build out who are your investors, who's my group. And what we teach is staying in contact every 90 days. And your job, your primary job in real estate is to cultivate relationships. That's your job every day. As an athlete, it's the same thing as going to practice every day. If you want to be on the team and you want to be a starter, you've got to go to practice every day and you've got to work hard in practice every day. It's no different in any business. You know, one of the things that I've learned over time is in order to succeed in any venture, you have to do the things you don't want to do. You've got to do the things you don't want to do. I played football for 11 years. I think it would be pretty safe to say I never wanted to go to a single practice. And yet I never missed a single practice. So wanting to do something has nothing to do with anything. It's your job. And again, in, in real estate sales, it's your job to cultivate relationships. And it's important to understand that you can't, you can, it's, it's not going to be good for you if you have a transactional orientation, meaning all you're worried about is doing a deal. Transactions don't compound. Relationships do. And this is why you've got to start out focused on cultivating relationships. And that's hard for people because there's no instant gratification. I've got to do the work knowing it's the right thing to do, knowing it will pay off over time, and I've got to trust the process. Most agents don't trust the process. I would venture to guess most investors don't trust the process. And one thing I preach all the time, all the time, the last thing anyone needs is a new idea. The last thing anyone needs is a magic pill. And there is no instant anything. There is no instant anything. There is no quick fix. If you're going to succeed, you've got to take a long-term approach to what you're doing. 
So the first phase is laying down the foundation. The second phase is how do you actually then grow your business? And in real estate, growth is about process. You have to build process into everything that you do. Most agents, they're not building process. They're winging it every day. They're running a daily fire drill in their business every day. They're reacting to what shows up. And they, you know, they pinball from one thing to the next. And that's, that's why you get on this treadmill of chasing, convincing, closing, and you can never get off of that treadmill. And so if you want to be able to grow your business in a way that is sustainable, in a way that is scalable, and, a, and in a way that is less stressful, then you have to build process into everything that you do, how you work with a buyer, how you work with a seller, how you do your marketing, how you do your inspections, how you do your negotiations. Every aspect of the business has to be checklist driven. And this is really the key to be able to grow your business with mo what most agents are doing. And I would imagine most investors working harder. That is a very flawed strategy. Working harder can't sustain that as a strategy. Working harder can't scale that as a strategy. Working harder is very stressful. It's not stress-free in any way. So the second phase of your business is building process into everything you do. And that's how you actually grow a business. And then the third phase is having a succession plan. Again, the thing you most want to avoid in real estate is doing this for 30 plus years and your last deal is your last paycheck. Instead, you want to be able to monetize everything that you've done for 30 years. And whether you're selling it or transitioning it or creating a referral agreement with someone, you want to be able to get a paycheck once you're done. And that's not going to happen by itself. You've got to put a plan in place. And this is what I'm beginning to work on with many of my top clients. Most of, you know, at least 50% of my clients are doing over 50 million a year in sales, many over 100 million, some 500 million and above. They've got big businesses. And I was just talking to someone today top agent in Northern California, and he's getting closer to retirement. And he's got no plan in place whatsoever. And I said to him today, if you, if you don't start now, you're going to get to the end and it's going to be too late. Then you've busted your butt for all this time. You're very successful. And your last deal is your last paycheck. It's not a pretty ending. Steve, that was Excellent. And honestly, to our listeners, please don't let the fact that he's talking about real estate agents jade you into listening to the actual things that he's saying, right? Because I can go through the three phases of that Steve just talked about and reframe it for you exactly how you should be thinking at it as a short-term rental investor, as a property manager, as a co-host, right? Because like, if you go through the growing the business and the process, that is how you get out of the working in the business to working on the business, right? So once you get to your five to 10, 15 listings, and now you have enough money to hire somebody, that's your process component. So that's stage number two, right? And then in the success plan, that is just more of, of the same, right? Dialing in your system more and more, leveraging yourself completely out of the business, hiring a key person that supports you is the same shit, guys. Like he's I just have... using the, the real estate agent label and I am very receptive to it because I have, have the agent background. But please don't listen to this and be like, this episode doesn't relate to me because I'm a, I'm a co-host. That is I took a bunch bullshit. of notes when he was talking because... Dude, it's exactly what you did too, right? Like it's, it was your process. Like if I look at your background and your, and your history, Mike, that's exactly how you did it, right? Sphere yeah. of influence people, processes. If you're new you have to go out and make contacts. People are like, how do I get deals, right? So Steve, for contacts, we have people that are buying properties or they're basically property managers for Airbnbs, right? You can go one of two directions or combination. 
And they're like, what's that magic? How do, what's the magic thing that's going to get me all these leads? I'm like, you got to make connections. Like you go out and make key relationships with someone like a Steve. Like, so for me, I'm pretty introverted. I can get out of myself and do what I got to do now. But at the beginning, I was like, what are the key relationships that I need to make with people that are involved in the real estate transaction from agents, lenders, title companies, lawyers, whoever, that if I build good, genuine relationships, guess what? We can refer business back and forth and they can become a sales force for me just by trading business, right? And then go out and actually make contact with people that have properties over and over and over again. And it'll take time, but it's worth it if you actually do the work every single day. I think what I wanted to talk about and dive deeper on was the last piece, the succession plan. Because one of the things that I always ask people is like, what is your end game? Like, why, why are we doing this, right? It's easy to jump in and just start being the little worker bee and doing the work. But what is your end game? Like, is there a certain income level you want to get to? Okay, cool. Are you, what are you going to do? You're just going to ride that out forever? Or do you want to position it so that you can sell this business at some point or sell this portfolio or whatever, bring on a partner and then you take a smaller cut and let the partner run it? Like, what is the end game that you're working towards? Because if you don't have that in mind, like you said, at a certain point, you're going to get to the end of the line and be like, damn, I wish I thought about this. If I had like dialed in these certain things, maybe I would have been in a better position to sell this portfolio or sell this business or whatever at the end. And I think a lot of people miss that. They, most everyone misses it. And you, you really touched on something that is so important. Now, everyone has heard this concept before in their life. This is nothing new. Start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. The challenge is no one really explains what does that mean? It sounds great. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, let's start with the end in mind. But how do you actually do that? In real estate, it's baked into the industry. No one ever actually says it. However, it's there and everyone knows it. And it's this false idea that all I need to do is sell more homes. And magically, if I keep selling more homes, in the end, everything will be okay. And I'm here to tell you that's not what actually happens. I've been coaching now for 31 years. That's a long time. And I've got to see entire careers. I'm now seeing how does it actually end? You know, people will come in on day one, and how does it actually end? And I'm here to tell you, and I, I, I'm, I'm guessing it would be the same way. I don't care how many properties you invest in. I don't care how much you do. If you don't understand where you want to be at the end and work backwards to create a specific plan to get there, you're not going to get there. What I have learned, and again, this is nothing new. This is a universal truth. More is not the answer. In fact, that's going to be my next book. More is not the answer. And so many people, again, because this is an aspirational business, being a real estate investor, that's aspirational. And the idea is, oh, I just need to do more. I just need to do more. And somehow, if I do more, everything's going to be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. What more equals is more stress. And one of the things that we talk about, that I talk about in my coaching practice, one of the key themes is it's not how much business you do, it's how you do your business. It's not how much, it's how you do your business. And it's not that more is bad, not saying that at all. What I'm saying, how you get to more, that's what makes a difference. And when you focus on being better all the time, when that's really the goal, being better, then more will be a byproduct of better in a much healthier way for whatever business you're in. And so, again, you got to think about in the end, do I want a business that I can sell? Do I want a business that I can give to the people around me? 
not give, but, you know, turn over to the people around me? Do I have people in my family? Do I have kids that I want to, you know, bring them up into the business? Do I want to sell it to an outside source? Again, you have specific options at the end. However, the option that most people end up with is nothing because they didn't have a plan. They didn't think it through. So you're exactly right. If you're going to get into residential sales or real estate investing, what does the end game look like specifically? And then it's going to t understand this. It's going to take a solid five to 10 years in that third phase. That third phase is a solid five to 10 years in order to create and execute that transition plan. Now, in real estate, there's three components. If I, if I want to monetize my real estate business, if I don't want my last paycheck to be, I mean, my last deal to be my last paycheck, one, I've got to have my CRM. I've got to have documentation. Here are all the people I'm connected with. This is my database. This is my source of business. And it's all there, all the information, name, property address, phone number, email address, home anniversary, notes, kids, birthdays. I've got a real database of people that I do business with. Then the second part is I have to have an operations manual to my business. All right. Here's the people I have. And now here's the process in which I generate business and everything's documented. Again, here's my process. And then the third aspect, I need a detailed accounting. Here's what we did in year one. Here's what we did in year two. Here's where we did in year three. I've got it all broken down. Buyer, seller, price point, commission, everything. All the numbers are there. So when I can deliver a CRM, when I can deliver an operations manual, and I can deliver a detailed accounting, there's value. I've got something that I can monetize. Now, that doesn't happen by itself. Again, if all I'm doing is chasing a deal, either in sales or investing, if I'm just chasing deals every day, and remember, chasing a deal is addictive. That's why you do it. It's addictive. And it's addictive because it's a low probability activity. When you're chasing after something, it's a low probability activity. So it takes a long time. And by the time you actually do a deal, now you need to do another deal. And again, you're in that hunt for instant gratification and it's a treadmill you can't get off. On the other hand, if I'm very disciplined in how I do my business, then in the end, I am going to have something that I can actually monetize. You can tell that like you've been you've been at this for a while, just how from how clear and simple that is. And again, it goes with the title, right? Like real estate is not rocket science. Not rocket right? science. But it's it's the same again. I just I just want to make sure that we have a frame for our listeners, right? Your CRM is your CRM, but for us is your management agreements. So your value in reselling your business is your management agreements. If you don't have management agreements, you don't have anything to sell to anybody, right? Your processes is your, is your ops, right? So how you run your business, your VAs, your cleaners, your maintenance team and everything else. And the detail is just showing how legit your journey has been. And I love, Steve, I love how more is a byproduct of just doing things better. Because one of the things that Mike and I see all the time is people being like, I need more listings. I need more listings. And we're like, how are the ones that you have are doing? Because if you have hundreds of listings, but they're not performing, we would argue that if you have 50 listings that are performing 100% better, you have less stress and more money, right? So more, more money is a byproduct of having a better product. Love yeah, that. I want to tap into something you said. When we wrote the book, The Real Estate Team Playbook, the thing that became so obvious in writing that book, because teams, it's a big deal in real estate. Everyone, everyone wants, wants to build them. a team. Yeah. Yeah, expansion teams, things, all kinds of teams. One of the yeah. things I love to say, and I love to say it every time I speak, and I say it for shock value, however, it's 100% true, 
And what I say is if you want to work harder, if you want to make less, if you want more stress, start a team. It works every time, every time. And everyone always chuckles, ha ha ha, isn't he funny? Hey, guess what? It's true because people don't understand teams. I played professional football. I understand what it actually means to be on a real team. Most teams, it's a team leader surrounded by a bunch of people and everyone's got their hand out. That is not a team. And getting back to your point, what we learned in writing the real estate team playbook is you can't do everything. You can't do everything. And every, everyone's going to run into, fall into that trap. It's unavoidable. The question is, do you want to get out of that trap? And do you want to stay out of that trap? So that means you can't do this alone. You can't do this alone. And if you want to succeed in anything in life, in, you know, in a bigger way, you have to have people around you. And you have to understand that you have to empower these people. They're not there to just do your bidding for them. Your success is predicated upon their success. And that means you have to have clearly defined roles. More importantly, you have to have process in place. When you bring people into chaos, you're creating more chaos. If you want to have a successful team, you have to have real process in place and a system to support people and a system to hold them accountable. And the hardest thing in growing a team is finding the right people. Even in the NFL, in the NFL, where they spend millions, and I mean millions of dollars when it comes to the draft every year and doing research, and they know where all the players are. They know what the top schools are. They know where the top guys are. It makes it a lot easier. They, in their first round draft choices, they only get it right 20% of the time. It's really hard to find talent. However, if you don't find talent, you can only go so far. So again, your point around you need other people to help you is absolutely critical. You can't do this all by yourself. One thing I wanted to ask you, somewhat related, just since you've been coaching now, like you said, for 31 years, I'm sure you've seen just about everything at this point. I'm always curious, and there's always commonalities, but what are some of the key traits that you've seen from the people that have really taken off from the ones that are just doing okay? Okay. And this is going to sound totally self-serving. So get ready. The key to being successful in life is being coachable. Do what your coach tells you to do. Do what your mentor tells you to do. Again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's been invented. I don't need to come out and create a new system of investing. I'm just going to waste all my time. There's a proven way of doing it. And to answer your question, the clients who are coachable, the ones who show up and say, all right, I'm just going to do what you tell me to do. They have the most success. Bar none. The ones who want to cherry pick, oh, I'll listen to this or I'll listen to that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Th this is not an a la carte menu. When I coach, it, it doesn't work if you're going to say, okay, I agree with you here. I don't agree with you there. In my four years, in playing with the Miami Dolphins, I never once even thought about going up to Don Shula and saying, hey, coach, I've got an idea. I'd like to run it by you. What do you think? It doesn't work that way. Find a mentor. Find a coach who you, know, you align with and do what they tell you to do. That is my advice, bar none, if you want to be successful. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mic drop moment. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I tell people all the time, I'm like, I, I have coaches in various areas of my life because I don't want to waste time. They've gotten to a level that I want to get to. 
I'm more than happy to compensate them for their time. And it's just the fast lane. And on top of that, they're making introductions for me and doing everything else. But I think the best compliment I ever got was from a mentor of mine who was like, people asked him, you know, what made Mike different? He was like, he did what I told him to do. Even when he was terrified and even when he didn't feel like doing it, he just did it anyway. And like, if you can just get comfortable being uncomfortable, because I guarantee when you're coaching somebody, Steve, especially if they're new or if they're trying to get to that next level, it's going to be uncomfortable. That's normal. It means you're growing. Otherwise, you'd already be doing it. Yeah. If you think I wanted to knock on a door, you're crazy. Okay. I had played in a Super Bowl. I worked on Wall Street. If you think I wanted to go out in Fullerton, California, in 80 degree weather, in a suit and tie, sweating profusely, knocking on doors, no, I didn't. And what you said just a moment ago, it's a big part of my coaching practice. You've got to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. If you're going to succeed in life, it's because you do uncomfortable things every day. If you want to do what you want, then you are not going to succeed in life. It doesn't work that way. You've got to, again, goes back to, you've got to flex the muscle of doing what you don't want to do. That's it. We don't have a lot left of the show, but I wanted to touch on something because I think it would be kind of silly for us with all of the years of experience that you have and the different market cycles that you've seen for us not to ask you, right? So when you started year one, you said it was a terrible year. You guys still managed to sell 53 homes. Now, 31 years later, you've seen a couple cycles. So I just want to hear your opinion on what's going on with the market, the rates. What are you advising people? What are you seeing coming on? And to the people being like, oh, this is a great market. This is a terrible market. Like just walk people through in your experience, what you've seen and like from that perspective, how they can help themselves be successful in such an uncertain kind of market with interest rates and everything else. Well, one of the things I learned on Wall Street, because again, I was at the, the center of the financial universe. On Wall Street, they don't care what the market is doing as long as it's moving one way or another. Volatility creates opportunity. The markets that are the toughest to make money in, and this would apply to anything, are markets that just chop in a tight range. That, that, that's a tougher market to make money in. It, you know, if it's going up or going down, there's going to be opportunity. More importantly, though, and this is where I'll bring in the, the spiritual component to things. In life, you've got to understand what you control and what you don't control. And you have no control over anything that is external to you. You don't control the markets. And so if you're going to be successful, you've got to tune all of that stuff out. It is impossible to predict the future. And I hear this, I'm, I'm hearing it now. You know, the, the year is winding down. People are getting set for next year. And I hear these comments. Oh, I think it's going to be, well, well let me back up. You know, when the Fed came out a week ago and said, we're going to lower interest rates next year, everyone, oh my God, they're going to lower interest rates. This is going to be so great. Guess what? What if Putin drops a nuclear bomb on us tomorrow? Okay. Anything can happen. We don't know what's going to happen next. So one of the things I coach to, whatever is happening, that's what's happening. None of it's personal. It only feels that way. And everything is temporary. You do not control what's happening in life. We've all been sold this bill of goods that somehow we can manifest whatever we want. Total nonsense. What's happening in front of you right now has nothing to do with you. It's the result of natural forces interacting for 20 billion years. How do I know it has nothing to do with you? Because if I leave planet Earth today, what changes? Nothing. Life keeps going on. So markets are going to be markets. There's going to be markets that go up, markets that go down, markets that go sideways. What you have to understand is what is your job? What is your job? Your job doesn't change because a market's going up or a market's going down. Yes, you may make some adjustments in what you're saying. However, your job doesn't change. So forget about the markets. Again, 
I've been doing this for 31 years. I've seen markets go up, markets go down. They're just markets. You've got a job to do. Do your job and you'll be okay. And, and it's not that you're going to be okay. You are okay. The last thing that I would leave you with, and this would apply to everyone listening, is please understand that fear is running your life. Fear is running your life. And the most important change you want to make going forward is learning how to let go of your fear. This is the biggest thing, and this would apply to anything. Everything that you worry about is a story in your head. That's all it is. It's a story. And if you think about all the things that you worry about, how many of them actually happen? Most of them don't. And when they do happen, which they do, your experience is very different than you imagine. So if you're going to succeed in life, you've got to be able to confront your fear, not push past it, let it go. Let it go. And that applies to everything. So good. Well, Steve, really appreciate your time coming on here. Before we uh, drop the last question on you, where can folks grab copies of your books and learn more about you and your coaching programs? Uh, Amazon.com. Oh, I've got three books, this one, and then uh, the full fee agent that I wrote with Chris Voss. Or you can go to performancecoaching.com, performancecoaching.com. That's a fantastic URL, by the way. It is. <laughs> it's a great URL. All right, cool. So the last question that we ask all of our guests, and I'll make this a little broader for you, but what would you say is your number one secret to success in real estate? The number one secret is you have to learn how to enjoy every day. If you can't enjoy the day, what's the point? What's the point? And if you don't enjoy today, you wasted today and you're not getting today back. So no matter what you do, if, if you really get down to it, it doesn't make a difference what we do in life. It doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is how do we enjoy our time here? And that's what you have to pay attention to. And that's what you have to work on every day. Love that. Love that. Well, Steve, thank you again for coming on. Truly appreciate you guys. Go head over to Amazon, pick up Steve's books, head over to his website. You know, especially if you're an agent, man, and you're looking really up your game. He's been, he's been in a long time. He's helped a lot of people. So again, Steve, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. I appreciate the opportunity. Happy holidays. Happy new year to everyone. Thanks for having me. Likewise, always a pleasure. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.